It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Schaap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. Have you been able to get outside and play? Been a little bit cold at times, but then there have been some nice days as well and some nice weekends to where you might have been able to get out and play a little bit of golf. I hope you really have been able to get out and play. Hey, coming up in this episode of From the Short Grass, I sit down with new Sheridan High School football head coach Kevin Kelly. Believe it or not, Kevin Kelly got involved in the golf business at a very young age, right out of college, as a matter of fact. You will hear about that coming up in this episode. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Find them on the web, blackmanauctions.com. We're back with more from the short grass after this. Stay with us. Strength is measured not by the number of accounts. Strength is placing value on relationships. It's having the vision and the guts to invest in growth. It's the commitment to responsibly manage your money. At Stevens, we believe that our strengths build success, not only for us, but for our clients. Stevens, member NYSE, SIPC. Heading to El Dorado to check out some live music or to play Mystic Creek? Stay at the Haywood, the only boutique hotel in the middle of downtown and the Murphy Arts District. If you are spending a weekend in Hot Springs, make plans now at the Marriott Courtyard close to Lake Hamilton and Oakwan. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group manages both of these fine properties and you will rest easy knowing that your every need is taken care of. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels on the web at bphotels.com. I'm Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. I've heard it said that sometimes there are two best days with real estate ownership. It's the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Depending on where you are in your journey, let me help. If you're looking for that outdoor getaway or that home in the city, I can help. If you're looking at selling that outdoor property you haven't seen in three years, I can help. Or selling that home in the city that you've outgrown, I can help. Blackman Auctions is your one-stop real estate company. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. Do you remember ever shopping at the Golf USA store in Hot Springs, Arkansas? Well, if you did back in the mid-90s, one guy that was part of that store was Kevin Kelly. Yes, head football coach Kevin Kelly of the Sheridan Yellow Jackets once ran the Golf USA shop there in Hot Springs. A lot has changed for Kevin since running that store in Hot Springs. He's become one of the greatest high school football coaches in Arkansas. And now, you're about to hear his story. On the tee, Kevin Kelly. Kevin, thanks for joining me on From the Short Grass. Before we get into golf, congratulations. You're back coaching again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I am uh, I love coaching. You know, people talk about being a basketball player doesn't define me, or being a golfer doesn't define me, being a coach doesn't define me. It kind of defines me. Yeah, I'm, it I'm does. a coach, and I'm proud of it. And I, and I wish more people would be. Like, that does define me. I'm proud. That's who I am. I'm a coach at heart, and... And I am glad to be back. I got to go and, and start a business, Kid Champion, so we're still going to have that going. And and uh, I miss coaching and miss some aspects of that. But I enjoyed my time off, spending time with the family and getting to do the radio show at, on the buzz. And I'm still going to still gonna do that Wednesday radio show and do my thing. So I'm excited about it. What led you to Sheridan? Why Sheridan? You know, I really wanted to build something. You know, I've already, there's, there was already several job offers that have, jobs that have opened and some people have reached out and and it, it's not easy, but when you go to a place that's already winning, it's not as much of a challenge. And in the end, they'll say, well, anybody could have won there, you know, whatever. 
And I wanted a, I wanted a chance to build something and mm-hmm. put something together. But I also, I love working with kids. And I think, you know, now that I've spent some time with the pros and college kids and high school kids, you can really make a difference in impacting how they think. And I like, for the way we play football, I like them to think that just because you've done something the same way doesn't mean there's not a better way. I want to impact that on kids and have the other impact that the life lessons football brings. And it's a chance to do that in a place that hasn't won a bunch in a while and and but a town that has really nice people. I talked to some people I I know from there, and they're like, "There's not a better place." So, you know, it's the best of both worlds for me. I get to stay. I get to own my company now. I get to do a radio show, and at the same time, I get to go down there and and coach kids in a very nice town that's starving for some football. They haven't won. You were telling me this a playoff game in forty six years, nineteen seventy seven. That's what somebody. That's what multiple people have told me somebody reached out and disputed that then somebody disputed them back on facebook or something <laughs> but yeah that that's that's what i was told i don't know if that's true for, I great place for facts. an argument facebook yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you're gonna get a lot of factual information there but you know that's what i've been told and either way you know just because somebody hasn't won doesn't mean they don't want to win you know they just need the right things to come into place and do that so I'm hoping the town buys into a different way and, and, the, and the team and the coaches buy into a different way. And if they do, I think we'll have a chance to be successful. It is going to be a different way. I mean, your blueprint worked well at Pulaski Academy, and no doubt you're going to take that same thing down to Sheridan, I would believe, right? Yeah, yeah, exact same thing. People say, how much are you going to change? You changed a little bit when you were at Presbyterian College. Well, I did because they I, I didn't do a good job of getting them to buy in. And they didn't buy in, and the, you know, this, the captains came to me and said, hey, can we try to play a little – version of regular football and at that point we 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 couldn't win a conference so uh i i agreed and but but in my mind and i don't i still go back and forth don't know if that was the right thing or not because it's not what i believe in and uh and it didn't do any better in some ways i think it was worse but but yeah i believe in it so taking the blueprint that i believe in i mean if you lose but you lose doing what you believe in it's a lot easier to deal with than if you lose the other way right no doubt about that Let's talk some golf here. Okay. Growing up in Arkansas, yeah. where and when did you first pick up a golf club? First picked up a golf club in college. There was, I went to Henderson. Up the road was Caddo Creek. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's a golf course anymore. <laughs> I mean, it was on the side of the road, and it, I hope it doesn't offend whoever owned it. It was, we called it a goat ranch. I mean, they had greens, they were Bermuda, they weren't bent grass, and they were not maintained well. So it was kind of like mowing your yard really good and playing there except for there was probably more dirt than there was grass but one on one day on a whim we were bored you know how you get bored in oh, college yeah. you don't know what to oh, do yeah. and uh you know one of the one of my buddies goes hey let's go let's go try to play golf well then you gotta start finding golf clubs so i think uh I think, go to some antique mall somewhere yeah I, I think a yard sale yard sale and i actually had a wooden headed driver Okay. Simon Wood had yeah. a driver, you know, not the metal headed drivers they have now. And and uh uh so went out there and started banging it around and it was awful, like you would imagine. I mean, no pro we didn't know you gotta go to the driving range and practice. I mean, I'd never swung a golf club. So there's whiffs. I mean, I bet it took to go nine holes, I bet it took five hours. <laughs> Cause then I'm gonna find my ball. Right. You know, and uh, uh and then that started. I, I really liked it. We kept going back to Cata Creek and then we uh, then we upgraded to to, to Gray Golf Course. Oh, there you go, yeah. And uh we thought that was the best thing ever. And then uh I guess probably two years in and we were still terrible, same little group of us went and played in a uh an open scramble and we were awful. You know, guys are posting sixteen, seventeen unders at Hot Springs Country Club. That's the only way we could get on the course, we felt like. To play in a scramble. We played in a scramble, and we shot one over as a team, and we thought it was the best thing ever. Y'all were last place? Last, dead last place. <laughs> but I got hooked at Hot Springs Country Club probably two years in because, uh, you know, in some holes they had a long drive, mm-hmm. and I and I had the longest drive. And so I won their little gift. Two years in, and you're already winning the long drive? Well, I don't. I let it hang loose on the drive. I, I just reach back and go after it. Because in my head, I was... I've always been an analytical guy. I knew this. If I, I I can hit a pitching wedge a lot longer than I can hit a a lot better than I can hit a four iron, so I need to blast this thing. If I can get it around the green, I've sure. got a chance. And that that was that was that was kind of the way I started playing. It was because the the holes were so short at Cata Creek. If you blasted your drive, you're chipping. Mm-hmm. And so that was that was my whole mindset. 
So when you were playing Hot Springs Country Club, were you still using the persimmon driver when you won that long drive? Or no, had you upgraded no. to a metal driver? I, I, I went to another yard sale, <laughs> and I got a, it was a little bitty-headed tailor-made metal driver. I think it was a tailor-made. And it was awful, but I didn't know it was awful. And it was better than the persimmon, the persimmon wood. I got a hold of that thing, and I felt like metal. This thing's really going to blast it. So I was swinging that thing so hard. When you finally got to a golf range and started working on the game, did you feel that it came a little bit easier to you? Uh, yes and no. I was get, you know didn't have the right mindset to understand golf. You know, I'd never read, didn't even watch it, didn't whatever. And uh, so I just went and I was just swinging, thinking practice makes you better. Like you grow up thinking shooting makes you better in basketball and do it, catching footballs make you better at catching footballs. I just thought if you go out there and whack, but I had no idea how to swing or anything like that. And uh, so, but I went out there because I thought practice could make you better. And it does. And I've never, you know, what's funny is I've never had a formal lesson or anything like that, but I've taught a lot of lessons. So how, really? would, you do, how would you do that? Yeah. You say, well... I graduated college in 92. By 1995, I was a 50% owner of a Golf USA in Hot Springs. Okay. And it just happened because I went to coach down in Texas and a buddy of mine uh, that got left some money by his folks when they passed, he wanted to start a business and he had played a little golf, but he knew he didn't know how to run a business. And at that time, or when I was in college, I was an assistant manager at a clothing store in the Hot Springs Mall when I was at Henderson. So he's like, you know how to do retail. Will you? I'll give you half this business if you help me run it. So uh, went up to uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma for a week, and, and actually Edmond, Oklahoma for a week, and they taught us how to use the simulator and teach lessons. That was probably what really taught me how to sort of swing better, right. to be honest. Right. So imagine these two guys that come up that couldn't shoot 100, won a Golf USA store. Sure, they didn't care. They're selling franchises, right? And so, uh, but we go back, and I was, when there wasn't anybody in the store, I was on that simulator swinging. And uh, that probably got it where I was actually decent. And then the good thing was you got to play golf for business. Sure. So uh, I was playing. I got my handicap down to a, probably a two for a while, which was really good. Holy for cow, yeah. But all I was doing was playing and swinging every single day. And it was right when they first came out with the screen and they would hit it and they mm-hmm. would show the ball. And this is 95. I mean, there's there's not even a cell phone, you know. Right. And uh, so that was way ahead of the game, and that really helped me more than anything. And by then, I was hooked, like absolutely hooked. So when did you get to play after becoming a football coach, or when did you know that you wanted to get into football and coaching football, specifically, you know, PA in high school? Well, out of college, I went down to Texas to find a job, and... It was great because down there, jobs were plenty. You mm-hmm. know, there's so many schools. And so I went down there, and uh, I didn't know anybody hardly. So, you know, I would I would, I would, would coach football. And then as soon as football season was over with, I mean, January, I'm, I'm out on the golf course by myself trying to find a place to play. And uh, so I stayed with it and loved it. And plus, that was my alone time. That was my personal time. I, I would try to get not get in a threesome or foursome or anybody and go when it was cold and awful and so I could be by myself and play and work on my game. If I wanted to throw down three shots, I'd throw down three shots, make sure I wasn't holding anybody up and keep going. And uh I did that and fell in love with it. And then two years later, I was down there for two years, then the, my buddy called me and said, Hey you want to come back and try golf USA. So I moved back to Hot Springs and and started the golf USA and then fell in love with it again. And then the move to high school football coaching? Then, yeah, then I went back down to Texas. Uh, actually, the beautiful part is... You're just uh, like a nomad. Yeah, I was, I was. And the beautiful part was, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual guy. I don't wear it on my sleeve. I try to live my life like that. But I think everything happens for a reason. Something mm-hmm. good comes out of everything. So I come back up. Man, I missed football. I mean, I loved golf, but I missed... I was co- I'd coached for two and a half years or whatever, and I missed football. Like, I loved it. But I love golf, too. So I'm like, God, it's tough. Well, I met my wife while I was up here. Met her at the Hot Springs Mall, and uh, we ended up dating for a, for a while and and get married and moved back down to Texas, and uh, the same school offered me my job back, so I was gone for a year and they so I'm like well they must have really liked me you know, so I went back down and we moved down there did that and did that for a couple more years had my son Zach, uh, while we were down there okay and then I moved up to moved up to PA and and uh, while we were doing all that right before Zach was born I was still playing quite a bit. Then things could sort of slow down for you in the golf world, but still loved it. And then got to PA and got the opportunity to play PV and Chanel and some of the ones I would have never played as a poor kid growing up. And uh, 
along the way, do I left out one thing? Glenwood Country Club. I hope you've played. Oh that yeah, before. I have. They opened up when I was after I'd owned the golf store. My next two years down in Texas, uh, they opened up, and I would come back on the weekend some and play at Glenwood, and they would let me play thirty six or fifty four holes. Wow. So I'd go out there and pay because I was a local boy. Yeah. And they, I'd go out there, and a friend of mine, Damon Ewing, and I, and he's in, he's works for Verizon. He's in Richmond now, but he loved it like I did. And we'd go play 54, two, two three days. I'd come back on Just a Friday in the offseason. First season, light, you're out there on out the course there, until it goes 50, down. Until it's that 54 holes. Yeah, that's. And then we'd go out and. You know, we're playing little money games on the putting greens for another hour after that. So sure. I'm knocking out. We could play around. We could play 18 holes. We got. Well, we could play 18 holes if nobody got in our way in two hours. Have they told you about Sheridan Country Club? No, no. It's nine holes. Okay. Well, I guess I can play the whole round in two hours. You can keep going. Yeah. Or you could probably play it an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. Probably I know, so. I've got probably a couple so. buddies that around that Sheridan area. So yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a so. it's a good course. But I've Glenwood's it. Glenwood's made me fall in love, like because I love the setup and a different. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it would be not a good, you know, her Glenwood put in a course. I'm like, it's Glenwood, you know, like but some it's of the nice. Smart, oh, beautiful, great layout, challenging, different holes, and that, what that, that I just fell in love with the game of golf. That's when, and and I started watching it and doing stuff when I was at the Golf USA. But then when Glenwood built theirs, I go back down to Dallas, and now I'm trying to get to where I can go to the Byron Nelson Classic, volunteer, yes. whatever. Yes. So I went to that for like five years in a row. And that was what late nineties, early two thousands. That was that, no, that by that that was still mid nineties, ninety five, ninety six, okay. ninety seven. So right around the time Tiger Woods. Yes, that's was why our up. golf store made a, a good money. Yeah, and because Tiger Woods exploded and everybody started playing golf. Sure. So we opened up the doors. We're not even. They don't even have a parking lot paved. It's a dirt road parking lot. The day one, we hadn't advertised nothing, and we did a, we did a bunch of big sales that day. And I'm like, this is the greatest business ever. But it was Tiger Woods phenomenon. Yeah, everybody in golf was making money, and uh, and I got to do some really cool stuff and be around some really cool people and and uh, but but then going to the Byron Nelson Classic, I had a friend of mine that was a teacher. Her dad was the CEO of whatever the big sponsor was, AT and T. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so we got party passes to the you know stuff and hang out, and I got to stand right beside. I mean, shoulder to shoulder with Tiger Woods sometimes, and John Daly and. I never told John. John and I kind of know each other a little bit now from different things, and uh, but that's where I first met John Daly. I, I haven't ever said, "Hey, John, I met you a long time ago." Buddy. Right. I met you in the '90s when you were on top of the world. Of course, he wouldn't remember. It. He was on top of the world. Yeah. But, you know, but that golf's been a big part of my life. I love it. I don't get to play very much at all now, but I absolutely still love it. Follow the game. When you get out there, is it a way to kind of get away from everything else, though? No question. My phone's going crazy while we're talking. Out there, don't worry about the phone. Yeah. And and it is. It's an escape. It's like movies. I love going to movies because I turn off the phone. And you can't let a movie ring. You know, same thing in golf. You don't want to be the guy that's always on the phone in golf. I mean, you know, some people do it. And I get it. They got a, more important things than I do. You know, if you're a neurosurgeon and you're on call, you got to do your call. But I like the escape. You're exactly right. I love the escape. I love the beauty, the nature. I look out there in the background. You can go like, go play a lotion. Look at that. You know, I've got been lucky and played there like five times. You're like. Look what man did, but look what God did first. You yeah. know, and it, yeah. it's just nice to get away. It's phenomenal. It is out there. It is, and there are phenomenal courses all over this state and all over the country. Yeah, yeah. And I've been lucky. You've played a bunch of them. I've played a bunch of them, and uh, uh, I wish I was as good as you at playing because then it's more fun. Because sometimes you get out there and you're me. We need to play sometimes. Sometimes you get out there and you're me, and you're like you're frustrated and you forget this is a great game i love being out here you know you get that for so i'm doing better at that you know this summer i played probably three or four times and i got lucky one day and shot a 79 there you go and uh and uh you know then the, the next day i was out there and i shot like an 87 so kevin i've always know. said a bad day of golf beats a good day in the office and that's 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 that's, that's no no truer statement was ever said when you met bill belichick how did that come about and i think i understand he plays the game as well you know well that's one thing he does we've never talked much about it we've talked about a lot of things a lot of things you know what he likes watching on tv movies you know he's, he's taking me and my daughter and son and my wife in the car driving us around town and and so we've had a lot of off we hadn't talked about golf but that came about you know i was sitting on my couch one day and watching nfl games on a sunday coaching at pa you know probably like eight or nine years ago now and i get a call and uh from uh somebody random and they're like hey 
uh, is this Kevin Kelly? Like, yeah, and they're like, hey, Bill Belichick knows somebody that knows you, wants to reach out and see if you want to uh, come to a game. He heard you were speaking at – I was speaking at Notre Dame Okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the next weekend, I think it was. And uh, they had a Sunday night game. He's like, so Saturday you're speaking at Notre Dame. He'll leave tickets for you if you want to come to the Indianapolis game. They're fairly close. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. Why, how would I take, you know, so he leaves tickets for me. Well, then I get there and there's word that's like, hey, you know, this is a pass to come under the stadium, meet him afterwards, after the game. So it was the it was the game. If I don't, it's, it's sort of infamous because they were playing and it's the game where Indianapolis lined up for a fake punt, lined up like two guys on the ball, the center, and lined up everybody else over there, and it was an epic fail. And they're like, "What a you know that Bonehead was the game. That was the call. game, and it, yeah. it, it, it was became infamous. So we go down under the stadium, and it was weird. You know, the the game was over with. It's late at night. They got to fly back. <clears throat> they got to fly back to to Boston, and we were down there. And I'm like, "Well, this is gonna be a quick meet and greet." I didn't know. Go down there, and there's all these relatives stuff. They're behind these gates, and I'm standing, and I'm like, "He's not gonna see me. He doesn't know who I am. I'm certainly not gonna yell yell at him like all these people are yelling for their people." And somebody comes out and just grabs me and Zach and pulls us over to the locker room. And I'm like, this is weird. Oh, wow. And so we go there, and he sits, and we talk for an hour. An hour? An hour. Now, while we're doing this, guys are getting on the bus, getting their stuff and getting on the bus, all the players. Tom Brady walks past. Julian Edelman walks past. All these guys. And and I'm just, you know, Zach's just like goo goo gaga. Oh, yeah. Think about, you know, eight, nine years ago. I think he was 17. He was, because he had just torn his ACL. Anyway, so we go, uh, Bill talks to us. The buses are full now. I finally go, I said, Coach, don't, don't, don't you have to get on the bus and fly? He's like, ah, they'll wait. You know, and I'm thinking, okay, they will wait. You know? Yeah, you're the but head At the same coach. time, we talked for a long time about everything and a uh, good hour. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is weird. And finally, he looks, he goes, Zach, where are my manners? He goes, would you like to meet some of the guys? I'm like, they're already on the bus. So he's like, who do you want to meet? And me and Zach are speechless. And because, you know, I'd met him, been talking to him for an hour. And Zach goes, well, I don't know. And he goes, oh, Tom Brady, everybody meets Tom. So he yells at the guy that's standing in front of the bus security guy. He's like, hey, Bill, get Tom Brady off the bus. Tom Brady comes bebopping down there. That was our first. We took a bunch of pictures and talked, and he was super nice. And then uh, Zach got a little courage. He's like, uh, how about Julian Edelman, coach? Because <laughs> he's a small receiver. Yeah, smaller. He gets him off. We, we hang out. He was awesome, too. They stayed and talked to us probably another 45 minutes. Wow. And every player's waiting on the bus. And I'm just like, this is the weirdest thing. But a relationship was struck there. Mm-hmm. We, 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 we really enjoyed talking to each other way more because he gave me the, he's like, look, uh, people say this, but I really want you to come up to Boston, spend a week with me and, and let's see, you know, let's watch practices and sure, go yeah. to meetings and that kind of stuff. I'll How give you cool full, is that? I'll give you full, uh, uh, full freedom in the, in the, in the, in the space. I was like, okay. I thought people say that. Do they mean it? And he, he said he really meant it. Well, the next year, I decided to text him. Gave me his phone number. I text him and say, hey, we would love to come up for that week you talked about. He's like, all right, let me know. So he did it. We're sit- we we get to go up. He has me and Zach. We're in meetings all week. And, and I mean, we're in meetings with him and Tom Brady watching film. That's cool. And that's it. You know, and I'm just like, this Tom is Brady like- loves to play the game. Yeah, yeah, he does love the game. He's a member of that- a very prestigious golf club down in South Florida, too. Is he? Seminole. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if he was going to be a member of Augusta. I know you got to be invited for that. I'm not sure if he is. And though. you can't ask. Uh, no, you're no, not you can't. To. You're not supposed to ask. But uh, that would be a dream. I've, I've I've spent a lot of time with him playing golf with Tom Brady. I would love to play golf with Tom Brady. Would love. How it. cool would that be? It'd be really cool. I wanted to. Uh, I knew at one time when his son was going to be his oldest son was going to be in ninth grade. He was moving him, and he was they were looking at going to Nashville or Florida to move him to a school. And I really. And he wanted, he kept saying in there, he'd be like, Coach, man, I love you. I, I, I want my boy to throw the ball. I want my son to throw the ball. I almost asked him, hey, Nashville's not far from PA. Why don't you just get you a little house in Little Rock, bring him to PA. <laughs> and I didn't ask him for this. I thought, what if his kid's not any good? I'm yeah. not playing him. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't care who you are. If you if you can't play, you got to deserve to play. And I'm not playing yet. And I thought, well, that'd be awful. I, he moves to Little Rock, and I don't play his kid. Tom Brady's flying in on a jet every Friday yeah, to watch and, his and, son play, and you're not going to play. And I'm not play. playing him. I thought that could go bad. I really did think about – I mean, like, I, for a week, I was playing it out. What are the pros and cons of this? Would this be good? And I ended up not doing it. I kind of wish I would have now. That would have been cool. Yeah. That would have been cool. Favorite golf course you've ever played? 
uh, it's at the time I played it, it was the hardest golf course in Florida. It was the Lagoon Legend, and uh, it had the it had the highest slope. What part rating. of Florida? Had the highest slope, De- the, uh, just this side of Destin. Okay, and it was all along the swampy. Mm-hmm. Area. I literally had bought two brand new boxes of balls. Two. I had two, twenty four, and at that time I was probably a six handicap. And of course, we played it from the back, and I lost every single ball. Twenty four golf balls. Twenty four, and I was pretty good. Wow! For a regular golfer, yeah. you know, cause I've done research with Golf USA and stuff like that. There was a U.S. Uh, not, uh, Golf Digest did a thing where they asked every public course in America that would to ask everybody that played a round of golf just write their score down. And they wanted to see what the average score was on a Saturday. That's when you get everybody oh, playing, yeah. right? They're the yeah. weekend golfers. What was the average there? 115. Holy cow. They said, keep the score true. They had like 200-something thousand scores. 115. Wow. 115. 115. So at the Lagoon Legend, I shot way over 115. But I played it exactly right down. I mean, you were hitting to island fairways and yeah. island greens. Yeah, and, it's and, tough. And it was it was tough, but it was but but I loved it. And then I played a, a course in Ocala, which is known as a horse place. There's a lot of race horses they have breeding and stuff like mm-hmm. that. The Golden Ocala was like a Tour 18, which it was three three holes of Augusta National, you know, okay. replica holes, yeah. three holes of of. Like uh, the old course, yeah, or something yeah, like St. That. Andrews yeah. and yeah. different stuff like that. That was cool because they did a really nice job with it, and you really could feel like you were there, right? And uh, that, those two, and the Tour 18, and then Alosha. I mean, how do you not put That's Alosha good. in there? Alosha is gorgeous, and I love that too. So that, I named four, but those are all awesome. All right, I think I know one of the answers to this question: Fantasy for some living or deceased, three of the golfers you could play around with. I would assume Tom Brady is going to be in there. Yeah, yeah, Tom Brady definitely. I'm gonna say John Daly. Okay, just get, I'm a. I mean, how are you not a John Daly fan? Yep. Grow up there. He helped me make money in that business. Yep. When at the same time, uh, Tom Brady, John. Well, that's a fun group so far. That's Tom real fun. Brady, group. John Daly, me. I want. I would want somebody kind of fun. You know what? Phil Mickelson. I love Phil Mickelson. I like that he got in a little trouble. <laughs> you know, yeah. got out of the trouble. Got out. Kept of it. playing. I love that he went through his thing on TikTok where he was doing, you know, calf day. You know, <laughs> he'd go and do his calf right, day. Right. He seems like a fun guy, but I saw it. bombs. I saw a TikTok on him that was a five minute TikTok, and somebody was just talking to him, and he was he they were saying, ask him a random question. He was like, "What are your thought processes?" You know, and you, and he goes, "You're 110 yards out. What are your thought processes going into the shot? Are you just like, I know that's my shot. This is what I'm hitting." He goes. No, I figure out what time of morning it is. What's the humidity? How much moisture is on the ground? How much how much water is on the ball right there? How's it going to slide through? If it does, do I need to hit it higher in the air? Do I, need to, do I need to land this five feet past and drive it back? Or do I need to one hop it in front of the hole because the moisture's higher mm-hmm. and the ball's not going to uh, backspin as much? And I was just like, he went through, I did 10 seconds of that. You think about that on the football field. Yeah. He thinks about that on the golf and course. And I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, just like that's why those guys yeah. are better than everybody they else. They are. Kevin, best of luck at Sheridan. Thank you. I appreciate it. I enjoyed this. This was awesome. Appreciate you having me on. I'm honored. Traveling to Fayetteville to watch a game? Forgot to book a room for the night? Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group has you covered. Stay where the fans stay. Staybridge Suites is just south of Baumwalker Stadium and is an all-suite hotel within walking distance of Baumwalker, Bud Walton, and Razorback Stadium. Or you could stay at the Comfort Inn and Suites with newly remodeled rooms throughout the entire property. Find them on the web at bphotels.com. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. I'm Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. I've heard it said that sometimes there are two best days with real estate ownership. It's the day you buy it and the day you sell it. Depending on where you are in your journey, let me help. If you're looking for that outdoor getaway or that home in the city, I can help. If you're looking at selling that outdoor property you haven't seen in three years, I can help. Or selling that home in the city that you've outgrown, I can help. Blackman Auctions is your one-stop real estate company. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. Before we go, I want to thank Blair Allen and Matthew Allen, Beachwood Pinnacle Hotel Group. Find them on the web, bphotels.com. When you need an overnight place to stay, make sure it's one of their hotels that they manage. And last but not least, I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas and you get that new set of clubs or golf balls or golf bag that you wanted under the tree. 
Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.